Now this lesson is the lesson for channel mixer, lesson 18. And the one before this is pad mixer. Make sure you see that one first. Also, this is part of our series, of course, on how to use the MPC software. So, of course, we're gonna do this in here. And it's gonna be better than having to work with a standalone when mixing because you can see this one overall page. Let's look at this mixer here. I'm gonna come to here. I'm gonna click right here. Again, and you see it, we have a mixer here. So I've got this set up for, currently it's set for channel. I'll put my cursor here. This says show pad mixer. Let's look at the pad mixer. My pad mixer. This is the track right here, right? Stop that. So we've got our mixer, pad mixer here looking pretty cool. Next, I wanna go to channel mixer, which is right here. So you can see right here we have four parts. So the pad mixer shows you all the drum pads. I come to here, of course, and I have this. If you don't see this, you come down to here. Hit that little pad right there, and you can see all the, where the little pads are. Okay? And then when I want to see the channels, I come to here. Now, my first channel here is going to be the drums. I can tell from the bottom here, it's a drum program, Trap Kit. The second one is drum kit. So let's stop it. I'm going to go to here. Turn the solo off. I'm going to solo now my second output here. We got a crash cymbal, hi-hats, finger snaps. That's here on this track right here. That's that channel. Stop that. We're going to go to the next one here. This is going to be a plug-in track. some sort of bells like right stop that no more solo I'm gonna solve the last track here or last channel okay now they're all playing at once so what happens is that when we're in pad mix we have our pads here and this last channel here is the output from the pads. So let me turn these pads off from the bottom and get a better view. There you go. And we can see that, that this is the channel. If I come to here and I cut this off, we have no more drums, except for the track that has the finger snaps, the crash, and the hi-hat. Now we hear these drums again. I'll solo them now. Now I'll turn this down. We don't hear it. I'm gonna go back up here again. Get to about zero dB. Stop this. All these sounds are going into this one channel, which is that drum mix channel, which we call a program. I go back here, and here you can see it here again. We have show the channel. These are the channels right here. It's soloed. Now we also have here. The submix, we have eight submixes. Now, in a submix, I can send something here I want to have as a submix. I want to mix some sounds together or something. Here, I have returns. So, as I come to here on this side, I head to the right, we have four returns over here. I'll press play. You'll see here, the very end, we have, right here, we have our master out, one and two. Now I can mute that, mute that, mute that, and the drums are just going to the master out now. Let me stop this. So I can do stuff like add effects if I want to somewhere in here. Like, for example, let's say I want to go to the send here, and I've got a reverb already set up here already, right? This reverb is right here. This reverb here, a non-linear reverb. Let's leave it on init, the, the initial setup. And let's say I want to send these drums over there, right here, these drums here. 
so I can solo them out kind of, which I normally don't do when I'm mixing, but this is just for demonstration. I want to send this drum to there. So the entire channel is going to hear. And this is the effect. So no effect. Now it gets and it's overdone here, just for the purpose of explaining how this works. Now I can also make it easier on myself. I can come back to here. I might just want to go to the pad mixer. Here's the pad mixer right here. And I want to just send the snare drum there. I'll go back to bring my pads back out. I want to send that there. And so I'm going to go here and send that to one. I'll play it. You hear it going there right now. I'll turn this off. I'll send this here. That sound right there. I can send the hi-hats. So we can send other sounds within the pads directly to that return. I'll come back to here. This is the return right here. If I send it to you right here, right? And that's one. So one, two, three, four represent these four returns. We have return one, two, three, and return four. Now, sometimes I will do that when I want to send something there to add some reverb or delay or whatever effect I feel it needs, I'll put it there, particularly for singers. Now here we have subgroups. And so we can send stuff to subgroups as well. So let's say for example, I have this one here, this is the drum mix, right? I want to send it to a submix. So I'll send it to submix one. And then when it goes to submix one, I may want to send, let's say we'll send this there too. Just for demonstration purposes, I'll send this to submix one. I'll turn this off. And now you don't hear anything but the plugins. I can mix them out. Okay, what happened was I sent these outputs from channel one and channel two into the submix, and now I can turn those drums off, these two channel drum groups off, one if I want to. Off or on. So I could even mix it that way by doing automation and mixing them in and out, right? But you get the idea I can combine any channel into a submix. Get out of here, which I normally call a subgroup, this is called a submix here. So you get the idea that just a highway in a sense, where I can send sounds over to a reverb or to a gate or something. I may want to come here and add a delay. Let's add a delay right here. I'll come in here. I'll get a delay in here. We'll put a delay right there. And then I want to send something to delay. We'll send maybe this sound to delay. All right, and we'll play this back. And you see the sound dissipate right here in return number two. I'll pull this down somewhat right there. And so the highway is kind of big. You can travel with sounds anywhere and make sure that you've got them in there. Check it. But you also want to make sure you don't get too distorted. But I'm just doing this to make it loud just for you to get an understanding that we can send stuff from a channel to a mixer and to a return as well. Now, once this all happens, it all ends up here in our master output one and two. Now, let's look at one more thing here I want to show you, right? We did the pad and we did the channel. Let's go to pad again. Let's get rid of these pads. Great. And we're going to come to here now. And now we're in, we're showing pad and channel. So on top here, we have our pads. Over here on the left-hand side, we see the four different channels for the programs. If I click here, those programs are gone. 
I click here, they're back. Our programs are right here. Our submix is here, one through eight. I go to here, I move the submix, they're gone. I go back to here, they're back again. I have returns right here, and obviously if I hit this button here, boom, the returns are gone. They're back. The main out is right over there, it's gone. The main out is back. You can see now how the whole thing works. I can pull the pads back up here. And now you can understand the entire mixing system here. Rather than being on a standalone and pushing the buttons around, you can see it, you can hear it, you can go back to it, you can get the right level you want here, you can turn the fader down here, you can change your panning, like the panning changes here. You can do a whole bunch from seeing it right here on one overall screen on your computer rather than on your standalone. But this is a great way to actually mix. So if you're gonna use a standalone, you can create some stuff. When you get through, you wanna mix it, just save it, pull it back in here, and you're good. So, as you can see, you can do a lot more than just go to pad mix or track mix. You can do everything here. Now I'll play it back from the top again. I can come in here, of course. I wanna add some compression. See my EQ here. I want to get something that makes it a little fresher. I want to make sure the bass is not too boosted. Okay, this is not bad actually. Yeah, refresh the mids there. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this compressor out. We got a different sound now. So, an EQ before a compressor or a compressor for the EQ. The EQ will EQ, and then the compressor will boost what's ever there or actually add however you want to use that compressor to that EQ. That's very important to know the order of how to put inserts into a track. You must listen and hear it back and listen for the effect you're trying to get when you're actually going to mix. Now, normally I come back and I would probably adjust that, but in this case, I'm going to go back to init here, and this is for our EQ here. And what I essentially really want to do here is get a little boost on the high somewhat. And a little bit low. Keep the lows where they were. Let's keep that all in one. That's good output there. So I hope these tips help you a lot. If you got any questions, hit me up. And I'll check you in the next one.